two of the most godlike deities in the Sonic franchise. Dark Gaia, a primordial force, arguably Sonic lore's closest yet abstract depiction of the devil, a nightmarish literal personification of pure evil, and Solaris, the man-made twisted incarnation of an ancient and eternal sun god worshipped for centuries, a celestial being of unadulterated power. But if these two gargantuan titans were to somehow clash, who would come out on top? I am the Sega Scourge, the Sonic Theorist, tackling 26 years of classic and modern Sonic alike. Let's find out. The concept of pitting two characters against each other is nothing new to the bemusing realms of the internet, but this one? Though it may seem an oddball for this channel, it's a topic that's cropped up continuously in several conversations with personal friends of mine. We've spent hours up to now discussing the what-ifs, detailing strengths and weaknesses, going into great lengths to accurately ascertain the victor of a battle that we will never truly see happen. For some time now, I've had a long-running fascination with the subject, most likely originating from the recurring childhood wonder of kaiju battles, like those of old Godzilla movies. There's something mystifying about watching two incomprehensible beasts mercilessly pummel each other into oblivion, isn't there? <coughs> anyway. So as a service to myself, I've decided to get this out of my system once and for all and show you, my viewers, my theory on whom I think would triumph in this bout and why. Let's analyze the pros and cons of each combatant. Let's start with Solaris. Solaris is a product of mankind, the shame of the Duke of Soliana, and the result of human science stepping beyond the boundary of morality in pursuit of something greater, jurisdiction over fate. The unified spirit of Mephilus the Dark merged with the flames of disaster and fire giant Iblis. This creature, this multi-dimensional god of space and time, exists with the sole purpose of utilizing its unusual moveset and otherworldly powers to bring an end to all that is. Sporting a unique, almost ancient Egyptian look, its ethereal appearance definitely gives off vibes of a holy celestial being, complete with a halo, or what would later become its wings, revolving slowly on its back as a separate appendage, but somehow anchored to its main body at no definable point. Its bizarre features are truly a sight to behold with its likeness of a divine bird and exaggerated antler-like prongs protruding from its cranium like some kind of accentuated crown. Gazing through its translucent, glossy frame reveals no bone structure or other innards, but rather a vacant space pulsating with smoky, psychedelic energy, almost like we're peering into another dimension. Now, as stated in Sonic 06, Solaris can exist in multiple time periods simultaneously, and as such, can only truly be destroyed by annihilating its physical body in each respective timeline all at once, making reference to the synchronized attack by the three super hedgehogs in the game's finale. Without that luxury, defeating Solaris in one singular point would do nothing, thereby making the angelic deity effectively immortal. Now at this point, I imagine many of you may cross out Dark Gaia's threat completely, being that Solaris has such a prevalent advantage. But don't let this information sway you so early on. There is still many, many more factors to cover before we reach a verdict, so don't write me off just yet. One of the other most obvious and well-known abilities Solaris possesses is the means to warp reality. This is a being that literally consumes entire timelines, dimensions, and the very fabric of existence. 
But we don't know the full extent of this power. Not to mention, despite the world seemingly disappearing around them, the entire main cast of 06 remained alive in a pocket of space-time, comprised of segments from their timeline and Silver's future. The characters did not disappear, nor did they cease to exist either. Though Dr. Eggman did note something rather interesting that might somewhat explain why that is. He stated that the space they're in is temporary and wouldn't last for much longer. If time caused this time-space rift, it won't remain for much longer. It was never elaborated as to why these select few survived the initial incident. Apart from them having immunity through their relevance to the story, there was no other explanation offered. So from that, and the Doctor's nod, if we take this at face value, it would seem that Solaris can indeed break down and consume time. But the matter that comes with that time? especially living beings, just breaks down slower. Interesting stuff. In terms of physical power, this is a tough one to ascertain. The creature is not known for brawling, nor did it attack Sonic Shadow or Silver with brute force once during the battle in 06, but rather relied on projectile attacks, making it very difficult to determine a benchmark for Solaris' strength as none exists. Though if we are to assume that Solaris has the combined aptness of both Mephilus and Iblis, Iblis' strength should have likely transferred over to Solaris as well. Iblis being able to lift portions of skyscrapers, with real-world weights around approximately 100,000 to 200,000 tons and beyond. That is an astonishing amount of power. One factor that Solaris unequivocally trumps Dark Gaia in is mobility. Solaris can fly, Dark Gaia cannot. This heavily limits Gaia's potential for close combat and gives Solaris a supreme upper hand in terms of putting distance between them and relying on long-range attacks. Speaking of long-range attacks, Solaris is capable of hurling purple jagged orbs of considerable size over a broad area, as well as unleashing beams of concentrated energy from its core. These attacks, amazingly, are powerful enough to bypass the invulnerability of a super state, causing ring loss when struck by them. Other examples of Solaris' abilities include the Wings of Light, an unbreakable field of energy exhibiting no weaknesses or fragile points, virtually impenetrable to all forms of attack, even those from a trio of superform hedgehogs. On top of that, let's not forget the huge spherical tears in the time-space continuum known as the Eyes of Solaris. These menacing, glaring globes have black hole-like properties, exhibiting strong gravitational forces that absorb anything in the nearby vicinity, crates, debris, even enemies thus making it incredibly difficult to escape their pull, meaning instant death when touched. Moreover, an alternative variety of these eyes, the orange ones, spit out random debris and propel them at their target, possibly objects pulled from other timelines. Not to mention that Solaris can also employ a more dangerous transformation when the need arise, evolving into its final form or phase two, no verifiable name exists. Now this is purely subtext, but this form seemingly multiplies the creature's maximum potential, but comes at the great cost of some level of self-control, descending more into what looks like a wild, rampaging monster than a sentient, intelligent life form. Yes, despite the praise, Solaris is by no means perfect and has a few noteworthy disadvantages. Everything has a weakness. As I said before, one of them being the lack of close quarters combat experience, but furthermore, its most conspicuous and pronounced feature is its consciousness, or core, to streamline things. A singular, smooth, molten orb rests in the center of Solaris' chest cavity, housing the god's mind. And encased in a thick layer of what I can only assume to be a ribcage-like shell, in a manner close to that of a breastplate to a suit of armor, this shell also envelops other parts of its body, making up the entirety of the beast's head and overlaying its hands and lower arms like a pair of gauntlets. As you can tell, Solaris takes great care in protecting its core and is by no means stupid, nor does it want to advertise its shortcoming. Speaking of short, Solaris is a very imposing creature, but quite small in contrast to whom it's up against in this video. Now, seeing as no size margin is available, nor has any official dimensions of these two monsters ever been released or confirmed, for the sake of this theory, I intend to accurately determine the height of both Solaris and Dark Gaia later in this video. My method's shoddy, but it'll do the trick. And here's how. Also, width is unimportant, so don't ask. So, Solaris. After Supersonic drifts backwards from an attack on Solaris's core, I froze the frame. 
For perhaps mere milliseconds, he lines up almost vertically parallel to Solaris's core. With this shot, we can gauge by comparison just how big the core is when compared to the Hedgehog Hero, who officially averages out at around 3 foot 3 inches, or 100 centimeters. The core appears to be around 3 times Sonic's size, so 9 foot 9 inches. Now, using a wider shot of the beast, we can measure up the body in its entirety, using the core as reference and multiplying it. By my calculations, Solaris comes to about 68 feet 10 inches in overall height. Certainly very large about the size of six three-story houses stacked on top of one another, but by comparison, still minuscule to Dark Gaia. Let's move on to presenting his pros and cons now, shall we? Dark Gaia is one of two eternal forces maintaining the cycle of the world's decimation and rebirth for millennia. An abomination, capable of ushering destruction on a planetary scale and corrupting its some 7 billion inhabitants with his mastery over limitless amounts of negative energy. As such, he commands great authority over the very balance of life and the tools to end it. Dark energy manipulation is one of Dark Gaia's most defining traits in Sonic Unleashed, capable of corrupting even the purest of souls around the globe reaching the peak of potency at nightfall, augmenting its influence and allowing him to feed off the residual energies emanating from the negative emotions of Earth's inhabitants, such as hatred, greed, or sorrow. Possessing little to no wisdom or intelligence, especially when compared to Solaris, he's not the most tactical of combatants. But believe you me, that by no means makes him any less fearsome. Dark Gaia is a true predator, a mass murder machine, existing for the sole purpose of bringing death to the world. His entire anatomy radiates danger and screams threat, with his assortment of razor-sharp teeth stretching along his face, curved dagger-like claws lacing his fingertips, flurry of tendrils emerging from a fissure or cicatrix on its back, possibly connecting to its spinal cord, and let's not forget the many unsettling oversized green eyeballs dotted around his head peering endlessly as to never lose sight of their oncoming kill. Evidently, from this, as you might expect, Dark Gaia is quite a proficient fighter. Let's look at some of his most notable forms of attack. He doesn't have many attacks in his base form, if at all, only visibly capable of discharging similar beams of energy to Solaris. While powerful, one shortcoming is the time it takes to fire them. Dark Gaia requires considerable focus when charging this blast, dedicating all his efforts to preparing it, and severely dropping his guard, leaving him wide open for counterattacks. In the CG cutscene prior to his battle in Unleashed, we see Dark Gaia ejecting his many tentacles, extending them at high velocity like spears towards Chip and Sonic, either to inflict sheer blunt force trauma or possibly to ensnare its foes and constrict them. But when reaching his full maturity and entering his perfect form, a plethora of special abilities become available to him. Just like Solaris, Dark Gaia is capable of producing long-range projectile attacks that come in the form of some kind of large, oversized tadpoles wriggling through the air filled with concentrated energy, homing in and dealing substantial harm, even bypassing a super state, just like Solaris. Not only that, but as he develops, his tendrils also undergo a shift as well, mutating and developing, taking on a snake-like appearance, each with another massive eyeball growing out from the tip. With these upgraded appendages, Dark Gaia can access a new means of defense. By spreading them out around him in various directions and pumping dark energy through them like blood vessels, he can generate a dome-like force field, covering quite an expansive amount of area. Plus, it's almost impenetrable, just like Solaris's. Almost impenetrable. Unfortunately, Gaia's does indeed possess a weakness, being the tendrils used to create it. Applying enough external strain on them can forcibly nullify the barrier, and being that a giant of equal strength is able to push through the shield with enough struggle, such as Chip in the Gaia Colossus. Regrettably, with this transformation, another flaw becomes even more evident and pronounced. A glaring problem is his eyes. This was already a prevalent problem in his base form, having three distinctive eyes in a consecutive line across his head region, each very bold and vulnerable. But as perfect Dark Gaia, he gains more than twice the initial amount, each a very easy target. His eyes are some of the only soft skin tissue on his highly dense and armored frame, with even the slightest collision sending him on the withdrawal, arcing back and writhing in pain for a few moments. Sonic is like an ant by comparison, 
but could just as easily bring the creature to agony with a few well-placed homing attacks, leaving Gaia wide open for further punishment. That being said, on the flip side, Dark Gaia does have exceptional durability and endurance, exchanging blows with the Gaia Colossus, a stone titan with arguably the same or a close level of strength to him, but bouncing back from each tremendous blow like some gargantuan Rocky Balboa. And despite his sizable eyes being a drawback, size is actually one thing Dark Gaia has in his favor. Dark Gaia is, whew, he is big undeniably the largest monster the Sonic franchise has ever seen, just by observation alone. But just how big is he? Well, by employing the same technique as I did earlier with Solaris, approximating his magnitude should be possible. Let's take a look at this earlier shot as an example, the one where Sonic unleashed hell on one of Dark Gaia's eyeballs. And freeze frame. Each eye is about the same size, so by waiting until Sonic is at the peak of his jump, then cutting him out from the image and lining him up horizontally with the eyeball on screen, and then multiplying him across the extent of the eye's visible width, we should get a good idea of how big one of these ridiculously large eyes is. Remember, Sonic's height is gauged at 3 foot 3 inches officially. A singular Dark Gaia eye has an approximate width of about 55 foot 9 inches across. That is already phenomenally large for just an eye. Now that we have the eye width, we can apply the same strategy as we did with Solaris's core, using it as a reference point. Since Gaia's eyes lie perpendicular to his vertical body, all we have to do is rotate that value 90 degrees and measure up his stature from top to bottom. Enumerating aside, Dark Gaia's approximate body height tallies up to a humongous 1,561 feet by 8 inches. That's bigger than the Empire State Building, which is only about 1,453.4 feet to the tip, and 23 times bigger than Solaris, with perhaps capability to get even larger, as seen in Sonic Unleashed's opening. Dark Gaia dwarfs Solaris in every sense of the word, and his toweringly monstrous size may definitely give him an upper hand, especially if trying to grapple a smaller opponent. But his size is not the only thing that caught me off guard during this analysis. I noticed his proficiency in easily hurling large smoldering masses of molten rock during the battle with the Gaia Colossus. From there, my attention was drawn to a particular cutscene that may have flown under the radar from many of you, but actually reveals something startlingly incredible about the beast's potential, highlighting what he is truly capable of. You may remember the cutscene in which Dark Gaia raises a portion of the planet using an invisible, almost psychokinetic force from his arms in order to further the spread of his dark malevolence and attain his perfect state, thereby lifting Eggman Land and accounting for one of the seven fragments of the planet that you can visit in the game. That's one seventh of the landmass seen in Sonic's world. Ergo, one seventh of the Earth's mass. Dark Gaia is lifting one seventh of the Earth's mass. Let that sink in. Note that Dark Gaia stands atop the outer layer of the Earth's core, with over 6,000 kilometers worth of the planet's density straight above him and around 910.1 kilometers of land across. That density accounts for the mantle and the crust, the mantle making up around 85% of the Earth's total mass. Taking into consideration that's 85% of the statistic for Earth's approximate total weight, the planet's weight derived from calculating the gravitational attraction that the Earth has for objects near it. We can then divide that sum by 7 and, well by my calculations, Dark Gaia is approximately heaving a staggering 117 quintillion metric tons in weight. Holy shit! That is a terrifying feat! That amount of strength is stupendous. The power to literally move worlds, making Dark Gaia a cosmic threat when in close quarters combat, especially since he seems fond of utilizing his claws, either slicing his target with titanic swipes or crushing them with his immense brute force. And moreover, with the advantage of added arms in perfect full power state, one strike from him may well be enough to render Solaris out of commission, or at the very least inflict monumental damage. Oh, and bear in mind, much like Solaris, Dark Gaia is immortal, one of the natural and eternal forces of the planet alongside Light Gaia, and thus can never truly be killed, only temporarily incapacitated. I bet at this point you're all itching for the verdict, right? Who would win in this amazing matchup of gods? Well, here's the determinant, the deciding factor that governs the outcome of this hypothetical conflict. 
the ability to devour space and time. That is the 110% penultimate win button strategy. No amount of strength or resistance can hinder that. And for that reason alone, Solaris takes the win in my book. With that power, the true unbridled demigod has complete supremacy in dictating how the fight would take place, if at all. And should the situation become dire, would simply annihilate all of reality around itself. Whether or not Dargaia could even survive after that remains uncertain. Being that, as I said earlier, it seems organic beings and fragments of the world survive in that temporal void we see in 06, a space between spaces. But as I said, that space is ephemeral and will eventually collapse inward on itself, wiping Dark Gaia out completely along with everything else. Solaris would have also absorbed a massive amount of energy, having begun to consume all planes of existence. And, let's remember, it exists in three simultaneous time periods, which Dark Gaia couldn't reach all at once. That eternalism proves that even if Gaia was somehow able to survive the collapse of time and then kill Solaris, it would change nothing. The creature would still thrive in another time frame, and the world would still come to an end nonetheless. Immortality means nothing if you cease to exist. Now don't get me wrong. Dark Gaia's physical strength outclasses Solaris's by a long shot. That's indisputable. Close quarters combat overall puts Solaris at a heavy disadvantage, being amply pressured by Dark Gaia's gigantic arms and countless tentacles. But Solaris does have the element of speed on its side with its ability to fly, minimizing the likelihood of being struck or caught, ducking and weaving around various swipes, whereas Dark Gaia, with his limited variety of movement, has lesser options for evading punishment. Solaris also has a wider variety of attack options and, as I said earlier, seems to be more catered towards long-range tactics, such as the scattershot of purple barbed orbs, as I mentioned. With them streaming at Dark Isle like a barrage of painful pellets, he would likely be unable to do anything about such plentiful attacks, being that they are A, too small, and B, there's too many to deter. Hypothetically, he could intercept them in mid-air using his tendrils or by pitching large simmering lumps of molten rock their way, but overall, he'd still be unable to cut off all of them before they make contact and a mouth blast wouldn't factor in due to the time it takes to charge, forcing him to either tank the hits or throw up his hands and assume a defensive stance. Speaking strictly of base form, of course, if perfect Dark Gaia entered the mix, his dome-like shield would come in handy against such an onslaught. And even if Solaris aimed to plow through the shield by force like the Gaia Colossus did, that would put him at striking range, and as I said, that's a hindrance. But puncturing Dark Gaia's fortified hemisphere can be done. I don't think it'd take very long before Solaris quickly spots a weakness. The green eyes, annexed to each tendril, each sticking out the shield, very open to a torrent of brutality from Solaris's fierce hellstorm, even if by accident. In retaliation, Dark Gaia's four long-range projectile attacks, as powerful as they may be, are almost completely ineffective to Solaris. One is too slow to charge, another is extremely choreographed, and that leaves him with only two, the tendrils or the tadpole things. However, the eyes of Solaris nullify any hopes of attacks even reaching Solaris, simply absorbing any projectiles that come its way, and potentially redirecting their firing line. Combined with Solaris's expansive field of movement and wings of light shield, entirely minimizing this possibility. Even perfect Dark Gaia's host of predatory instincts and new caliber techniques honestly can't keep up. All the dark energy in the universe pales in comparison to Solaris's all-inclusive grasp over the metaverse. In fact, Solaris may not even need to enter its phase two form in this matchup. Plus, if Solaris was to transform, the newly powered up Solaris would be unquestionably far more violent and unchained than its previous incarnation, consequently meaning the fight would take it up a notch. With the out of control Solaris endeavoring to puncture Dark Gaia's defenses, putting massive constraint on a counterattack of any kind. I know it may sound like I'm shitting on Dark Gaia, but the truth is, I'm not. Dark Gaia is one of my all-time favorite Sonic creatures, and part of the reason I wanted to develop this video so badly. But after the research, facts must be faced. It's a shame, too. Honestly, if not for a few smaller factors, I might have actually given the victory to Dark Gaia based on strength and endurance alone. Without going further into the bizarre, beyond philosophical black hole of runaway mayhem, this is the only conclusion to this earth-trembling battle. Dark Gaia's strength may be whopping, 
but it can't hope to balance out with Solaris's absolute dominion over existence. So, what do you guys think about this theory? Do you agree that Solaris would destroy Dark Gaia? Be sure to share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please show the channel some love by dropping a like and subscribing for more Sonic Theorist videos. As always, I'd like to give a special thanks and shout out to several key figures who helped out with this video's creation in all sorts of ways. My pal Riders Gaming for all the gameplay footage of 06 and Unleashed seen throughout this theory, SPD64 for all her artistic help on coloring the animated intro and providing those adorable chibi scribbles of Dark Guy and Solaris you saw before, my bro Steven Jesus for the brand new and deliciously green border around the video you're seeing now, and Chris Runs With Scissors providing the superb art for the thumbnail of this video. Thank you all so, so, so much, guys. It really means a lot, as always. From me, the Sega Scourge, the Sonic Theorist, thanks very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.